Hi, welcome to another edition of Beyond the Basics. Today we're with Kobe Krieger, and some people might think, Kobe Krieger, well, he's a sight fishing expert, right? That's true, Kobe's very good at sight fishing, catching fish off beds, but I've had the privilege to spend a couple days in the boat with Kobe, and I also happen to know pretty darn good topwater fishermen. Kobe, I want to talk a little bit today about topwaters, not so much buzz baits and buzzing toads, but you know, hard baits with trebles. And a lot of people think that, you know, whether it's a chugger or a prop bait or a walker, that it's a top water, just makes some noise, I'll just tie on whatever. But I've come to know through watching you that everyone, whether you're talking about a chugger, a walker, or a prop bait, they all have a little bit different window of time to use them. Yeah, I mean, you, you just don't pick up a top water and go to throw it. I mean, there's a certain time of the year you want to throw a prop bait, certain time of the year you want to throw the big pop R, the little pop R, and then the, you know, the Super Spook Junior is probably the most versatile top water hard bait that, that there is that we have in our variety of baits to use. Okay. I thought we'd start with, uh, you know, I'm going to kind of call this piece um, prop, pop, or walk. Those are the three baits that we'll deal with today. Okay. And um, I thought we'd start maybe with the one that has the smallest window, a, a, a prop bait, uh, you know, like a double, a, you know, with the double props and uh, give us a little bit of an idea when the best season, lake type, what you're looking for with this bait. I personally think a prop bait, when this here just happens to be a boy howdy, and they make this in the smaller version, which is a crazy shad, you know, I think a prop bait like this works best early, you know, January, February, I'm from Florida. That's usually when I throw it, when you have grass. Okay. The Potomac River, where we just came from, great bait to throw early in the year. You know, you use this maybe for 30 days, maybe 40 days out of the year, and then after the water starts warming up and the fish get a little bit more active, you don't need to throw this prop bait anymore. The thing about the prop bait is, when you throw it out there, it sits. I mean, it'll stay in one spot for a while. Okay. So when the water's a little colder, that's when you want to use a bait that sits in a spot a lot longer, gives them a little bit more time to react to it. Give me a water temperature window for a prop bait. I would say, 60, 65, okay. somewhere right around there, mid 60s. Once you start getting that up to upper 60 degree water, the fish start firing up and get going a little bit better and you can use something that moves a lot faster. Is this like more of a pre-spawn, on the spawn, post-spawn type bait, like kind of before everything happens? I would say pre-spawn, a little into the spawn. Just getting into the and, spawn. You know, down in Florida where I, you know, I do a lot of this, you know, boy howdy fishing, you know, it's a great, bed and bait because they're, they're fishing them great big holes of hydrilla or or uh, eelgrass and everything you can throw it in the holes and just let it sit okay. and you know but it's pre-spawn spawn and then then you move on to something else okay we will move on to something else uh next kind of in the lineup is the is the uh, poppers and chuggers and i know this is some of your favorite ones here the uh, the pop bars the big pop bar like this and then a smaller, you got the smaller one, so kind of what kind of window are we looking at for these, these baits? I mean, these, these are saying, you know, this is going to be, I would say, spawn, post-spawn. Okay. Um, not so much pre-spawn, you know, bluegill fishing, when the, when the bass are on bluegill beds, you can catch them on poppers and stuff also. Okay. But I would say spawn to post-spawn is when you want to throw your popping baits. Okay. And, and you know. The, the little pop R is more of a chugger, more of a popper. The way we fish the big pop R, you know, you can rig it to pop, but we also like to have it walk a little bit too. Okay. But it's a, I would say spawn, post spawn, and then, you know, you don't work these real fast. So once it gets again, then that post spawn and the water temperature starts getting up there again, it's not a fast moving bait. So then you move on to the, the spooks or the faster walking baits, because the fish are really active after they spawn, they want to eat. And as whereas the prop bait was more of a, a grass bait, I, I've seen you throw this around. You like a lot of bushes, a lot of tight cover, almost like your flip, places you'd almost flip a jig or something right. is where you're it, trying to get this bait. Exactly. The little pop R, you can't cast it as accurately, so you right. use it a little bit more open water, riprap, something that you don't have to be per, such precise with your casting. Now, the big pop R that you have in your hand here, this is more just like you said, some place that you might flip a jig or someone may pitch a jig under okay. a dock or whatever, that's where we throw this puppy. You know, it's heavy, you can cast it, you can be accurate with it, and you can get it in that spot and you can let it sit there and do its thing and the bass, they can't stand it. Okay. And then lastly, 
after we get kind of through the spawn and, and we move on into summer and, and into the fall, I'm guessing the walk and bake. That's when we go to the walk. Right, and that's, you know, after they spawn and then they're done guarding their fry, I mean, they're ready to eat. They want to eat shad, they eat bluegills, they're eating something. And that's when you start seeing the fish school blow up on things all over the lakes. That's when you want to throw some type of walk and bait, whether it's a, a super spook junior, a, a lucky craft gunfish, something like that. Something that you throw, oops, something you throw out and you just walk it boom, boom, boom fast. You throw it out there and you, and you get it coming back to the boat fast like it's a, a minnow or a shad trying to escape and that's, they blow up on it. Okay. Before we have you stand up and, and demonstrate e each of the techniques and the proper equipment, I want to go through each one real quick and just give us a modification, how you would modify any of these baits. If this bait comes out of the package, it looks like you might put your own hooks on Yeah, there. I mean, basically what I do is you make sure that the, that the hook eye is bent over. You can see I've bent this over a little bit so your line doesn't slide out of it. Other than that, you change the split rings and put new hooks on it. Okay. And that's, and that's ready to go. All right. Um, you've said something to me about on your on your uh, your your pop bar. You, you tie your own feather. Yeah, on the same thing on the big pop bar. You know, people thought for years that me and CP we'd get them and we'd shave the bills down or grind them down, right out of the box. You make sure the rattle's not stuck in it, which the old ones are fantastic. We put new hooks on it, bigger hooks. Okay. And, and we tie our own tails, and, and there's a couple reasons why we do that. You can see this tail here. It's hand tied. It's very white feathered, got one red one in it. You can cast it, the wind or whatever doesn't affect the, okay. the trail of it. This one here is a, is a store-bought, a lot more feathers in it, sort of affects the action of the bait to be honest with you, and a lot of people don't realize that. It, it doesn't make it walk near as good because it's got more drag on it. Okay. Can you trim this, this store-bought down or you just prefer to tie your own? Well, you can, you know, if you're in a pinch like this here, I just use for practice basically. But you can, you know, you can take scissors and, and trim them down. But the best part of a feather is the end of it. So when you're trimming it, you're trimming the best part of the feather okay. off. Okay. You're better to trim the top end of it because the, the back end of it or the little, little part of the feather is the best part to have on there. Okay. All right, well, we'll uh, get, get you to stand up here, make a few casts, and tell us about the proper equipment as you, as you go along. Got okay, else? well, when we tie these, and when we talked about prop, pop, or walk, okay. when, you, when you tie on a prop bait, you tie it direct. Okay. No loop knot, no nothing. Okay. When you tie on this little pop bar, you want it to pop or chug, you tie it direct. When you want your bait to walk or wiggle, whether it's a top water or crank bait, you tie a loop knot in it. Okay. You tie a loop knot, it goes back and forth a whole lot better. Okay. So the, the little pop bar, the prop bait, you're going with a direct cinch it right down onto the nose. That is correct. These are the walking and the big chuggers are, are you want a loop knot in. We tie a loop knot because okay. we really, I really don't throw this as a chugging bait. I throw it more as a precise casting walking bait. Okay. And I notice no nose rings in these. You tie them directly to the, you don't have a nose Correct. split no ring. Correct, no split ring, no nothing. Okay. All right, fantastic. Let's take a look at them. Okay. All right, we're gonna start out now with a prop bait. When I throw my prop bait, I always throw it on mono, 15 pound or 17 pound monofilament. It doesn't sink. You want the line to stay on top of the water. Can't use fluorocarbon because it'll sink. I throw it on a 6.6 six medium or medium heavy rod, and it just depends on how heavy a cover I'm fishing. Um, heavier cover, you go with a little heavier rod, so if it happens to get down in the grass, you can pull it out. 15 pound, 17 pound, medium heavy to medium action rod. Here we go. Now, prop bait, you throw it out there, just like in the old days, your grandpa told you, let the rings go away, and you're working it slow. Remember, the water's cold. The fish aren't real active, you twitch it once or twice, let it sit. See my bait's floating good, my line's on top of the water. If you use fluorocarbon, it'll pull the bait under the water and you don't want that. You want it to stay on top, nice and slow. Most of the time on a prop bait, when you get a bite, the fish just roll up on it. It's not a big explosion, it's just a rolled, sort of a rolled attack. That's where the medium action rod comes in with a nice tip on it and you won't pull the bait away from the fish. Halfway back to the boat, reel her in, do it again.
sort of slow, slow and tedious, but in the right conditions it pays off well. Next top water bait we're going to look at is the, the small Pop R, or small chugger type lure. I throw this on 10 pound test line, six and a half foot medium action spinning rod with a, a pretty good tip on it. That way it lets me get the bait out there quite a ways. The way we fish this, throw it out and sort of slow and steady, pop it back in. And you know you got a real good pop on when you can hear it do it, it makes a big old baloosh, baloosh. That's a, a very key sound that I like to hear when I throw my pop R out there. If it makes that big chugging, loud chugging noise, I'm really, really happy. And you may have to go through three or four of them when you buy one to get one that sounds perfect. But once you get one that sounds perfect, you hang on to that one and use the other ones for trade materials with your buddies. You can notice that pop R, you want it to sit more vertical in the water not flat like that prop bait. This thing here is a little bit more straight up and down. That's a very important key. You can hear that sound. And this here, you just throw it out. You throw it open water, maybe by a little structure every now and then. See it spitting water, making a big chugging noise. This baby here is working perfect. That's how I fish my little pop R. Up next is a big pop R. We like to call it Big Poppy. I like to throw it on 15 pound test line. Once again, we're walking it now, not popping it. Tie a loop knot, 6-3 halo rod, quick tip for accuracy. We're not throwing it very far. We hardly ever fish this bait less than 20, 30 foot from the boat. When you make it, when you throw it up there, you want it to land nice and soft. And you're just twitching it nice and slow. It's not popping, it's walking. And it's staying put a little longer than a regular pop R that you're chugging back to the boat. Makes a little noise, but not a lot. Use a short rod. You try to be a little bit more accurate with your cast, land it soft. A lot of times you'll see the fish come up behind it before they hit it. You're only working at five or six feet since it's more target oriented. Every once in a while, like that shade of that bush up there, you know, we'll throw it a long way. Try to land it as soft as you can. Work it in nice and slow. You can see it's not moving a whole lot. When the fish are up spawning, that's a very important key. The longer you can keep it in that fish's strike zone around his bed, around the stick or stump that he's wanting to live around, a lot better chances you have of catching him. And also I use a left-handed reel on this for a couple reasons. A lot of times when, they, when the fish, when it hits the water, they'll blow up on it right away. And if you gotta switch hands, you may lose a fish or two. So that's very important, but a lot of people can't use a left and a right handed reel. That's a very important, you know, technique I think that you can use because otherwise you may miss a fish or two. This tree here is a perfect example. You're coming up on a tree, you try to pick where you think a bass may be at and toss it up there. I think you might be on the end of it, the water's a little low. I don't try to go all the way across the tree to begin with because there might be two of them. Land it a little short or right at the end of it. Work it a bit. No action. I reel it in. And this time I'm going to put it right in the heart of the spot. All right. Last but not least, we're going to talk about the, the walking bait. More on up into the year. It's good from post spawn all the way through the fall when the fish are chasing shad. Uh, once again, six and a half foot medium to medium heavy rod. Depending on how far away from the boat you're gonna to have to fish the thing, 
um, 15, maybe 17 pound test line. You can even throw braid on it if you have to, if you're fishing it way, way far from the boat. Once again, a loop knot, it's a walking bait, you want to tie a loop. Hand tied feather, number two gummies, and you let it rip. When you're throwing this spook, you're mo mostly throwing it in open water. You're not really caring where it lands. It's not next to a stake bed or next to a tree or a dock. You just throw it out in the open water. And when you jerk it back, you jerk it on a, on a slack line. That's what makes it walk back and forth. Throw it out. Do a lot more jerking than you do reeling. If you reel, you're gonna reel up your slack and the bait's not gonna walk near as good. And the walking part of it is what makes the fish bite it, in my opinion. It looks like a wounded fish, a wounded shad. Once again, don't use fluorocarbon. It'll sink and it'll pull your bait under the water and it won't work. I normally fish it about three quarters of the way back and reel it in and fire it out again. You can vary your jerks. You can, you know, jerk it quick like this to get it going. Coming back to the boat, you can slow it down, make a wider walk with it. Your bait almost turns sideways or almost backwards sometimes. The good thing to know or to do is you don't jerk when you're throwing one of these. If a fish blows up on it, it's more of a just sort of start reeling. That way if, it, if you start reeling and you don't feel any pressure, you can stop it and start working it again. More times than not, it'll come back and hit it. And that's how I fish my spook. Hope these tips have helped you. Hope you catch a few more fish next time you throw a topwater. Don't forget, look at Beyond the Basics, FLW Outdoors. Thank you.